In this video, we will show you how to configure different input options and use the Zone 2 functionality of your Storm Audio processor. Let's start by opening a web browser and navigating to the Input tab. Here you will see a table showing all of the available inputs for your processor. There are nine columns of choices that you can select to configure each of the inputs. Starting on the left, click on the Y button to enable and disable the input. Disabling the input will make the input no longer selectable by end user control or third party control systems. When an input is disabled, the row will be grayed out and the letter Y will be replaced with the letter N. In the input column, you could enter a custom name for that input up to 10 characters. Changing the text label can also update third-party control systems based on the type of control brand and the programming implemented. The video in and audio in options are used to select the routing for the input. For example, the first listed input can be selected to HDMI 1 as the video in option. You can also choose audio input signal to be HDMI 1 or any other analog or digital input. You can also select no audio or no video if desired. Preferred Upmix allows you to set a fixed upmix for that input. Setting this upmix here will supersede all of the upmix selections in presets. Setting the upmix to none allows the presets and end users to take control of what the upmix will be for that input. Trimmer will allow you to lower the line level of the selected input. This allows you to adjust the inputs to be roughly the same relative volume level. Audio video delay, also known as lip sync delay, allows you to adjust the timing of the audio signal to the video signal. Triggers can be enabled on the input if required. Most triggering is globally set in the Settings tab. All selections and changes in the input area are automatically saved when changes are made. Let's move on to Zone 2. Under the Zone 2 Audio In column, you can select the Audio Input option for each row. For example, let's say your Kaleidoscape has a Toslink optical output you would like to have audio in another room from this source. Selecting Optical 1 from the drop-down list under Zone 2 Audio now allows Zone 2 to access the Optical 1 input from that source. Continue selecting all the inputs you would like for the second zone of audio. These choices are automatically saved. Please note that all HDMI sources that are being used for second zone audio must have a different audio route for zone 2 audio in, such as coax, optical, or analog RCA. Once you have all of your selectable zone 2 inputs defined, we now need to configure each output we will be using for zone 2. By default, the processor allows the downmix XLR outputs for zone 2 audio. You can also use any other unassigned channels that are not already assigned. To accomplish this, click on the main speakers tab. In our example, you will see that channels 15 and 16 are available. We will assign these channels for our second zone of audio. In the blue area, in the upper left hand corner, click on the drop down box for stereo audio zone and then click on create. Let's rename the newly created zone from Zone 1 to Zone 2 in the label area. Then click on Save. We have now allocated the last two channels of this processor for our second zone. The last step is to ensure we enable the use of our second zone in Presets. Click on the Presets tab and look under the column labeled Audio Zone. In each of the gray boxes below, click on them and then select the Zone 2 for each of the list. This will allow the preset to use Zone 2 if the customer or programmer chooses. Changes on this page are saved automatically. The Storm Audio processor allows up to two different sources of audio to be played at the same time. The first selected source is your main output to your theater, and the second audio source can be routed to Zone 2.
To demonstrate the use of Zone 2 and how to control it, click on the Remote Control tab in the upper right corner. We'll be focusing on the right side of the control page. In the Zone 2 Source drop-down list, select the source you would like for Zone 2. These are the inputs that were defined in the Inputs page. Next, in the group below, select where you would like the Zone 2 audio to be routed to. Click the Zone drop-down list to make this choice. Downmix will always be the first option and your created stereo zone will be the selection after that. The zone that is displayed in the drop-down list will be the zone that is being controlled at that point. Below, you will see the Zone 2 Source button. If the button is set to off, then the selected zone will just mirror the audio of the main theater zone. If this button is set to on, then the above Zone 2 will now use that audio option selected. The additional controls below will allow you to adjust volume, mute, and adjust bass and treble independently. This concludes this video tutorial. Please visit us on our client portal at stormaudio.com for more information and on YouTube for more videos like this.